Good day everybody, it's Andrew here and welcome back to my channel. We have a huge update from Bernie Sanders regarding the $1,000 stimulus check for seniors. Now before we jump into it, do me a huge favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and share this channel with anyone who you think might find this helpful. As always, please subscribe to my second channel. The best way you can support my work is by subscribing to my second channel and the link to that is going to be in the comments of this video. Well, let's jump right into it folks. Bernie Sanders is trying to include a thousand dollar stimulus check for seniors in the stimulus package this is something we've known about for a couple of months and this isn't something that's uh, kind of a crazy idea president biden himself has acknowledged it and he said they're trying to include it in the package but it might be as low as eight hundred dollars and then some rumors have even come out saying that it might be taken out completely and put in the next stimulus package now, in this video, we're going to have a huge update from Bernie Sanders. It is a message that he is giving not only to the American people, but to Congress as well. That in a time when millionaires and billionaires are getting trillions in tax cuts, billion-dollar corporations are making record profits, and the American people are recovering from a pandemic, an economic and health crisis, and now we have record high inflation, we need to include stimulus checks, we need to include Medicare expansions for seniors. We need to include a reduction in prescription costs. All of these things which will benefit seniors directly. Now, he's also going to talk about kind of the monthly stimulus checks for families, other things as well, but he's going to focus a lot on seniors. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. Do you agree with Bernie Sanders? It's going to be maybe a five to 10 minute clip, but listen to what he has to say, guys. He, it's really, really important that we keep this message alive and share this video with anyone else who you can, because the, the more we share these things, the louder our voice gets and the more Congress and President Biden has to listen. So let's take a look, see what Bernie Sanders had to say, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. They tell us that we just don't have enough money to expand Medicare, to cover dental care for seniors, to cover hearing aids, to cover eyeglasses. We just don't have enough money to do what every other major country on earth does, and that is guaranteed paid family and medical leave. At a time when hundreds of thousands of bright young people are unable to afford a higher education and millions are struggling with student debt. Uh, my colleagues tell us that we just don't have enough money to provide two years of free tuition at community colleges. When we have over 500,000 Americans sleeping out on the streets, including a few blocks away from the nation's capital, we just don't have enough money to build a low income and affordable housing this country needs. And at a time when the scientists are telling us that we pace, face an existential threat in terms of climate change, we are told that we just don't have enough money to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel and create a planet that will be healthy and habitable for our kids and future generations. We just don't have enough money. Yet today, the U.S. Senate will begin consideration of an annual defense budget that cost $778 billion. $778 billion for one year. And that is $37 billion more than President Trump's last defense budget and $25 billion more than what President Biden requested. And by the way, all of this money is going to an agency, the Department of Defense, that continues to have massive cost overruns year after year, wasting enormous amounts of money, and is the only major governmental agency and the federal government not to successfully complete an independent audit. Now, isn't it remarkable how even as we end the longest war in our nation's history, the war in Afghanistan, 
concerns about the deficit and the national debt seem to melt away under the influence of the military industrial complex. People sleeping out on the street, people dying because they don't have any health care, kids unable to get the early childhood education they need, not a problem. Can't afford to pay for those things. But somehow when it comes to the defense budget and the needs of the military industrial complex, we just cannot give them enough money. But that is not all, and I want the American people to know this, because I suspect many don't. It is very likely that in the defense bill, or attached to the defense bill, there will be a so-called competition bill. And this bill is a $250 billion bill that includes $52 billion in straight corporate welfare with no strings attached for a handful of extremely profitable microchip companies. Now, is there a problem in that our country is not producing the kind of microchips and the number of microchips that we should? The answer is yes. It's an issue that we have to deal with it. But we can deal with it in a way other than simply handing money to a handful of enormously profitable corporations with no protection for the taxpayer at all. Oh, and by the way, I should also mention that as part of the so-called competition bill, uh, there is also a $10 billion handout to Jeff Bezos, one of the wealthiest people in our country for space exploration. Combining these two pieces of legislation would push the price tag of the defense bill to over $1 trillion for one year. And I want people to remember that because when we talk about Build Back Better, you talk about a 10-year bill. This is one year. Meanwhile, while there is limited discussion about the defense bill or corporate welfare in the competition bill, Congress has spent month after month discussing the Build Back Better Act, which on an annual basis costs far less than the Pentagon budget, and discussing whether or not we can afford to protect the working families of our country whose needs have been ignored decade after decade, who in many cases are living paycheck to paycheck, can't afford housing, can't afford prescription drugs, can't afford to send their kids to college. We can't address their needs. No, no, no. Because we're too busy worrying about throwing money at the Pentagon and large profitable corporations. Madam President, if there was ever a moment in modern American history when we need to fundamentally review our our national priorities, now is that moment. Whether it is transforming our energy system away from fossil fuels, whether it's guaranteeing paid family and medical leave, whether it's providing health care to all of our people as a human right, as virtually every other major country does, whether it, whether it is taking on the greed of the pharmaceutical industry, which charges us by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, whether it is addressing our crisis in affordable housing or providing childcare and pre-K to the little kids, now is the time to reassess our priorities. Now is the time to fight for real change. But instead of addressing these major issues that impact the lives of working families all across this country and that the working class of this country desperately wants, Congress comes together, Democrats and Republicans, with minimal debate to support an exploding Pentagon budget, which is now higher than the next 13 nations combined and represents more than half of our discretionary spending.
Madam President, after adjusting for inflation, we are now spending more on the military than we did during the height of the Cold War or during the wars in Vietnam or Korea. And I would like to reiterate, this is after the war in Afghanistan has ended. Madam President, that is why I have introduced an amendment with Senator Markey to reduce the military budget by $25 billion down to what President Biden requested. Let's be, let's be clear, uh, this is not a radical idea. It is the military spending proposed by the President of the United States and the amount requested by the Department of Defense. And I look forward to support on that amendment, especially from the deficit hawks who I know are very, very concerned about the deficit. I should also point out that this extraordinary, extraordinarily high level of military spending comes at a time when the Department of Defense is the only agency of our federal government that has not been able to pass an independent audit and when defense contractors are making enormous profits while paying their CEOs exorbitant compensation packages. And let's not forget that in this so-called competition bill, there will be a provision which provides $53 billion in emergency appropriations for the microchip industry with no strings attached. Let me repeat that. We're talking about more than $53 billion in federal funds. And by the way, I suspect there will be more taxpayer money coming to these corporations from state and local government with no strings attached. Do we need to expand the microchip industry in this country so that we become less dependent on foreign countries? Yes. But we can accomplish that goal without throwing money at these companies with no protections for the taxpayer. In total, my guess is that five, one, two, three, four, five major semiconductor companies will likely receive the lion's share of this taxpayer handout. Those companies are Intel, Texas Instruments, Micron Technology, Analog Devices, and the and NVIDIA. I should also point out that these five companies made nearly $35 billion in profits last year combined and spent more than $18 billion buying back their own stock. And I should also point out that these five corporations combined paid their CEOs a combined $85 million in compensation last year. Further, it is important to point out that this is an industry that received nearly $6 billion in government subsidies and loans over the years. And it is an industry that has shut down over 780 manufacturing plants in the United States and eliminated 150,000 American jobs in the last 20 years, 29% of its workforce, while moving most of its production overseas. <clears throat> in other words, over the years, in order to make more money, they decided to outsource their operations and in the process throw American workers out on the street. So let's be clear what is happening here. <clears throat> in order to make more profits, these companies took good government money and then offshored good American jobs. Now for that bad behavior, these same companies are being rewarded with some $53 billion in no strings corporate welfare to undo the damage that they did. That may make sense to somebody, not to me. President, that is why I've introduced Senate Amendment number 4722 which would prevent microchip companies from receiving taxpayer assistance unless they agree to issue warrants to the federal government. 
If private companies are going to benefit from over $53 billion in taxpayer subsidies, the financial gains made by these companies must be shared with the American people, not just wealthy shareholders. In other words, all this amendment says is that if these companies want taxpayer assistance, we are not going to socialize all of the risks and privatize all of the profits. 